I'm always working on things, playing around with how models go together and different effects you can make. And today I'm making a model half submerged in a river, something I've not done before. Hi, I'm Edsgar, and you can follow along with me as I experiment and come up with something that just might be a little interesting. The idea comes from my Tanith first and only army that I've been working on for quite a few months. It's getting a little dull painting the same colour scheme so many times over, so I felt like a little change, and what better change than a squad of scouts sneaking through a river. I considered a few ideas, but quickly settled on a resin cast base inside a mould that I would have to make. But for a mould, I would need an original version, which just adds another step to my little project, as the standard 25mm bases that come with Imperial Guard have a chamfered edge. Now I could easily use this type of base and have a chamfer to the water, but I felt like an upright edge might look a bit more appropriate. So the obvious answer is to design my own and 3D print it, because that's reasonable and efficient use of resources. This will simply be a 25mm disc, 5mm tall, with a second disc just so that I can have a nice flat surface for the mould. Well, whilst that unnecessarily complex part is being printed, I should start on the model. I know I would need some form of a stand, a, a solid base of sorts for this model, so that when I pour the resin, the model will stand up correctly. But obviously not one so tall as to ruin my resin effect later on. I have some of these 25mm discs from WizKids models, I'm not really a fan of them on models usually, but they'll do perfectly for this one. The print came out fairly well, but you can see quite clearly here the pixel lines are on what will become the sides of my water. So I'll quickly sand that away for my next step. Somewhat annoyingly I lost the footage of my silicon pour, but there's plenty of those on YouTube for something basic like this. The result, however, came out pretty well and I have a mould with a good smooth recess for my water and a step above it so I can get a nice clean top edge, probably. So just to quickly paint up the model and everything else is ready to go. Only half a model, right? So it should take half the time? Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way. The legs are not the place where you paint with full effort and detail, so removing them doesn't actually save you a lot of time. But the arms, the weapon, the head, those are the places where you should be painting highlights and all the rest of it. But by rushing through it, leaving myself less than half an hour to do so, it didn't come out so well. Getting very close to the resin pour, I could do just one more thing to make the finished model look a little more interesting. There are a wide variety of grasses, reeds and so on that you can put in water. And in my case, I have this really stiff shoe brush that's been shedding hairs. I used some of these before on my Null models, and I wanted to try the same with some resin. Figuring out a way to attach these hairs is something I need to work out eventually, but with a spot of superglue and pressing a handful in, it just about holds them, and the resin will lock them in pretty much permanently. Well, look at this fancy close-up angle. Piling up some boxes to get the model right up to the camera. You should be able to see here that I've added some green and brown inks to make the water appear murky. I thought it was fairly subtle, but the end result will show I used far too much. Well, once mixed, the resin takes two full days to cure, so I'll skip ahead to demolding, which is a careful peeling the model and its new river base off of the silicon. I'd be somewhat tempted to leave it at this point. The base is successfully made, but it is very dark. I think I used way too much ink when tinting the resin for this one, so I'd like to see what it looks like without any ink at all, and try and work out the balance point. Whilst it would be somewhat difficult to remove the ink from this resin, given that it's fully cured now, I can make a second model without ink in the resin. This time I raised the model up just a little bit by using some Milliput to create a kind of belt and thighs piece that would end up totally submerged, but the height adds to the variety of the models. 
And I also made this one, which is from the Soldiers of Humanity sample model that I printed and painted a little while ago. I noted that the legs seem a little awkward for me, but by using this river-based technique, I can visually distract myself from his stature and return the focus to the cloak, which are really nicely designed. I also realized that this basing technique would work great for other models. It's silicon, so it's reusable. And during the process of making the models for this video, I also made a swordfish from Cowboy Bebop, and I made a sea base with the same silicon mold. Now the original plastic base piece for this one, I painted a little differently to try and have some kind of cartoony effect of water moving past in the background. But so far, that's a few of the models done for my squad moving through a river. I will make some more every so often and you might see them pop up on the channel from time to time. The one interesting challenge to come would be a heavy weapons team. Although if I do make them scouts, that might not actually be needed. But that's enough from me today, so thank you very much for watching. I'm Edgar, and I always will be.